uh, continuing on with our tracking series. This is going to be another classroom portion type of video. So uh, I'm going to do some more reading to you guys. Unfortunately, I'm a bit unprepared. I didn't bring the whiteboard, so I'm not going to be able to write anything down. But I'll try and do my best and uh, fill you in on, you know, what's most important out of what I'm about to share with you. So next thing we're going to cover is uh, assessing the age of spore and sign. And what that means is, you know, try to determine how old or how new it is just by looking at it. So uh, again, I'm going to start reading this stuff off to you guys. Uh, it's probably all important, to be honest with you. So, you know, recommend you take notes if need be, you know, if you're that interested in this stuff. Or you can always refer back to the video, I guess. So, uh, <clears throat> during this one, we're going to determine the time and distance gap. And I, I talked about that a bit, you know, in a couple videos ago, which, which is the key thing that, that you're trying to do whenever you're on a track line, more so if it's an active track. Uh, so you want to determine the time distance gap by the deduction method of assessing the age of spore and sign. Identify influence and factors on the six different types of observable spore indicators. All right, now I got a couple paragraphs that I'm going to read. It kind of explains, you know, what I just said. One of the most important aspects of tracking is the necessity to judge the age of the tracks to be followed if there was no one there to witness it or determine the actual time of the incident. And again, I told you guys, something actually had to have taken place for you to be out there on a track line anyway, so. This is one of the most difficult things to do in tracking, to make an accurate assessment of the age of the tracks based on their appearance alone. There are many factors which can, can and do affect the appearance of tracks, which can age them very quickly so that fresh tracks look old or make old tracks look fresher than they really are. The only way a visual tracker can learn how to assess the age of spore is by constant practice. I can't remember how many times I've said that, you know, even with your survival skills, you guys need to be out there practicing this stuff because it looks easy on video. You know, a lot of people, you know, make fire starting look, look real easy. Uh, but when you get out there and try it for yourself, uh, you can see some of the different hiccups and stuff that, that affect you and make it not so easy. So practice is very important. All right, but even the experienced trackers can be very wrong in their assessment under certain circumstances and conditions. The best way to learn the difficult technique of assessing the age of spore and sign is to create an aging stand. Uh, currently, I uh, can't remember what time it is right now, I don't have a watch on, but uh, we're expecting a blizzard, you know, this afternoon. Uh, it's probably just prior to noon time now, so... I will set up an agent stand and uh, I'll try to go through it, you know, on a daily basis, the first day on an hourly basis and uh, show you the effects of, of uh, time, weather and stuff like that on different things that is going to help you in the long run with uh, assessing, you know, the time of the, the tracks that were laid and, and what have you. But uh, again, that's the best way and probably the only way is to set one of these up yourself, you know, throw some different things on there and uh, see, just see how they age so you can, you know, more accurately assess, you know, how long that's been there and uh, it, it'll help you out, you know, on your track line. So <clears throat> with aging stands, obviously they're under controlled circumstances. You're doing it and it allows you to you know, see the differences as time goes on in these certain things. Uh, the visual tracker observes sets of spore and sign, footprints, damaged veg vegetation, fire pits, food products for example, over an extended period of time to see how they alter in appearance due to weather, time, and other local factors. Uh, especially if you got any, any types of food, you know, usually within three days of time anyways the animals and insects start getting to that stuff so uh that could be very helpful in determining you know how long ago those tracks were laid <clears throat> all right so calculating the time and distance gap based on aging factors you want to ask yourself to the best of your ability 
what was happening weather-wise when the spoil was laid and what, was happen uh, what has happened between then and now. Uh, there's several different methods to assess the age of tracks and by definition assess the time and distance gap. Observed activities from witnesses, victims, or electronic surveillance obviously can help you tremendously. And uh, if you have assets like that avail available to you, you obviously want to use them. Uh, and then there's a reasonable deduction technique. When assessing the age of tracks, the two hour rule is used. This rule brackets the age by two hours, for example, two to four hours or 10 to 12 hours, something like that. Uh, it's pretty much just a guesstimate. Uh, it's always going to be the case unless you actually seen them tracks laid and you can jot the time down. Uh, you're just going to give, you know, brackets on, on these certain things. So if the tracks are in excess of a day old, they are assessed as being one day, two day, three day, so on and so forth. All right, fact is to be considered when an assessing the age of spore and sign. <clears throat> the time of year, whether it's winter, spring, summer, or fall. Geographical location. Weather elements. Obviously going to play you know, a big factor in how that track line or how those spore look to you. Domestic animal movements. Seasonal state of local vegetation. So I, I wanted to show you guys some bruised leaving because I uh, you know, leaves, because we talked about that on a past video, but the time of year, the snow on the ground, uh, not too many leaves left on even the little shrubs around here, so I couldn't do that for you guys. Uh, the ground type and local activities. You know, if, if you're trying to track somebody and there's, say, a village around, or, or a town, city, whatever the case may be, you have to know, you know, how many other people are walking on these tracks, like, uh, in the last video, I shot showing you guys some of the different uh, action indicators and stuff like that. And uh, already there's been a couple more joggers going down that trail. So if I were to go try to track somebody down that, I have to understand that, you know, there's other people using that trail, which brings, you know, make sure you're following the right set of tracks, you know, from the beginning. All right, the effects of age and weather on ground spore. Uh, under that category, we have time and gravity. Obviously, over time, you know, the track's going to diminish. Weather and the time of year, we already just touched on that. Human, animal, and cultural activities. And uh, we just mentioned that as well. So that, there's a lot to consider, you know, with tracking. That's why I kind of told you guys from the beginning, there's a lot that encompasses tracking. Uh, hopefully I'm doing an okay job and you know putting it all to you guys in a way that you can understand it. The effect of age and weather on aerial spore. So again the last video I showed you guys some of them broken branches and if it just happened you know to within a, a few hours old it'll still look bright but as you get into you know several hours and, and days later those things are gonna weather they're not gonna be so bright anymore. So something else to keep in mind uh, grass and ground c cover plant plants and leaves vines and dense vegetation and skin bark all that stuff obviously is gonna weather if it's if it's been affected you know by somebody brushing through or walking through the area the effects of age and weather on sign stones and rocks insects and ant nests cobwebs water sites and sources. A uh, quick example of that on cobwebs when I went through the course. Uh, you know, we're practicing, doing scenarios with each other. We'd send, you know, one or two guys out and then one or two guys would try to track them. And uh, people were getting wrapped around the axles about cobwebs. Oh, hey, this cobweb's broken. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that the quarry has been through there. It could have been an animal that walked down that way and broke the cobwebs. But uh, in different parts of the country, uh, they've actually done studies. And within 15 minutes, uh, certain types of spiders will already start rebuilding that web. So you can't really go by that as far as cutting down your time distance gap. Um, it can be helpful, you know, 
in different areas and depending on what type of spider it was, but uh, that's just an, another effect of, of age and weather on sign. Uh, effects of age and weather on litter, ultraviolet and other radiation, rain, snow and ice, uh, insect and ant activity again. All right, the effect of age and weather on human body waste, fecal matter, toilet paper, urine, uh, feminine sanitary products, all that stuff is going to weather just like anything else. Uh, we actually had a medic when I went through the course, drew some blood from a couple of guys. So we got to put that in one of our aging stands and, and see how it weathered and just deteriorated over time. Uh, not sure you guys will be able to do that, but that, that's a good one uh, for blood anyways. The effects of aging weather on human blood products, all right, oxidation and shrinkage, and uh, insect activity. Again, you got a puddle of blood there, insects and even <clears throat> some other animals, you know, predators and stuff like that. They'll be all over that stuff, so you have to be aware of that in different areas. All right, so that this video we're, we're talking about, you know, assessing an aging spore. Uh, again after this storm comes and goes I'll do my best to get out set up an agent stand show you guys you know what they look like so you can set one up yourself and uh, monitor that stuff and see how it changes with, with uh, time and weather